Hello, my name is Joe. Welcome to the channel where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today I am doing a comparison between the Silvano, the Quick Mill Silvano, and the Lalite Bianca. I've done a full review of both these machines. I will put in the little box above. You could click on those to, to view either of the full reviews. This is just kind of a fun comparison just to show you uh, what these machines look like side by side how I think they compare, and you know, maybe what, how much more value do you get for an extra $2,000? That uh, is always kind of a concern for somebody that's looking at machines and thinking about like, why should I spend so much more money? All right, so we're gonna compare both these. We're gonna start with some tech specs and I'll give you an idea of you know, some pros and cons between the two uh, in those tech specs. And then at the end, I'll show you a shot made on both these espresso machines using the exact same grind, exact same coffee, so we can kind of get in a comparison. So let's get into it. The Silvano is a, a 0.7 liter boiler. It's a hybrid boiler though. Um, and it is, uh, it's a hybrid boiler because there's a thermo block that actually does the steaming. It is nice because you get steaming and um, you could brew at the same time. So it's almost like a dual boiler. Uh, whereas the Elite Bianca is a true dual boiler. You have a 0.8 liter uh, coffee water tank, and then you also have a 1.5 liter steam boiler. So this thing has a ton of thermal mass. We have the water tanks on both. The water tank on the Silvano is a two liter. The water tank on the Bianca is a two and a half liter. So you definitely have more water capacity on here, not to mention all the extra capacity in the boilers themselves. Um, and on top of that, the Bianca is also plumbable. So if you don't ever want to worry about a water tank or anything like that, just plumb it on in and you can do it that way. So it's kind of a nice little function. All right, so on the Silvano, the uh, boiler has a, a wattage of 600 and a steam boiler wattage of a thousand. Now, again, that's a thermo block. So some of that doesn't correlate directly. Whereas on the Lalit, you have a thousand watt, a coffee water boiler and a 1400 watt steam boiler. So you really do get um, quite a lot of wattage out of this machine. It definitely has you know, a bigger boiler, so it needs more wattage to keep all that hot. All right, so on the Silvano, you have two separate vibratory pumps. One obviously is for the coffee boiler, the group head, and the other is for the steam wand. On the uh, Lalite Bianca, on the other hand, you have one rotary pump that powers the whole thing. Um, you don't really need a pump uh, for the steaming on this because it's, the steam's all controlled versus with a you know the amount of pressure built up in the boiler. Whereas the Silvano is a little bit different, it's using a thermo block to heat that. That's why you need two separate pumps. All right, so one of the kind of con things um, I, I found probably the biggest, uh, one of the biggest at least, is the distance from the portafilter. So I did measure; it's about two point uh, or two and three fourths inches on the um, Silvano Evo, and that's using the portafilter that comes with it. Obviously, you can get a little bit more distance if you do a bottomless portafilter, but on the Lalit Bianca, I actually did measure using the two-hole uh, portafilter, and that did measure in at four inches exactly without the little um, tray here. So you do have a lot more range, plus you do get the bottomless portafilter to give you an extra couple of inches on top of that, so it really is nice to be able to fit a full cup. So the next thing is the uh, pressure gauges. I like that they all have pressure gauges. I think that's super important. It's nice to see your extraction. Um, it does show you your pump pressure here, and then you do kind of get to see the extraction a little bit um, within when you're pulling your shot on this uh, little pressure gauge there. Over here, you get a ton of information. You get your group head pressure gauge, you get your uh, steam boiler and your brew boiler. So you have a lot of gauges telling you how you're sitting, what you're looking like, and um, you know, you, you get all the information. Not that this is not as much, it's basically the same in a way, but you don't get quite the right information without having that group head um, pressure gauge. All right, so the next thing is the lack of the water spout on the Silvano. A lot of times, uh, machines that just have a steam wand, they'll kind of make a button that you can flip a switch and it'll shoot just hot water out of it. But this doesn't do that, unfortunately. Um, 
so obviously the Leap Beat wins on a long shot. It has a, a nice uh, water spigot steam wand arm there that you can easily open and close and it shoots out a lot of water very quickly. Um, on this, you do kind of have to just steam hot or steam cold water to make it hot if you want to have your Americano. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a downside. It's probably one of the biggest downsides of this machine. I, I think this machine would be worth a ton, ton more uh, to the average consumer if it just put that uh, extra ability to get hot water out of it. Anyways. All right, so the next thing is the actual steam wand. Uh, they both can steam and brew at the same time. Like I was saying earlier, they do it in different sort of ways, but they can both do it. And the Lelite is a little bit nicer in the fact that you can actually change your water temperature for the steam boiler. So as it's set out of the box, it takes me about somewhere between 36 to 42 seconds to steam um, milk. Whereas on the Silvano, it's about 36 to 40. Um, but you do have the capability of really ramping that up because you can change the steam boiler all the way up to like 290, 280 some degrees, and you would really get a much faster um, steaming experience. Also, it does come with two steam one tips. So you get a two hole and a four hole steam hole tip uh, in the box with the Lelite. Last but not least is flow control. This doesn't have it. <laughs> the Silvana doesn't have it. Honestly, it's not a surprise. Most espresso machines really don't have flow control or even the ability to have flow control, whereas the Bianca is kind of in a class of its own at this point in the game, that it has a paddle flow control built in stock at the factory. Uh, and to me, this is the big selling function of the Elite Bianca, not to mention all the other ni nice tidbits, but the big the big thing that really pushes this across the the finish line is the fact that you can really dial in and play around with your espresso a lot more than this this is you're gonna put nine bars out and that's it you're set and done so we talked about the tech specs i kind of gave you pros and cons a little bit within those but let me just talk about some of the weird oddities that we found uh using these machines i review machines all the time we use them as our daily drivers to really understand the machines and you know, get, get a nice feel for what, how they perform and everything. So I think the first thing on the Silvano, like I was saying, um, is definitely the steam, having to steam water is definitely weird. I don't like that. Um, the water reservoir, you do kind of have to do this like weird shimmy thing where you slightly pull it out and then you pour into the side. It's kind of, um, it's not terrible, but it's a kind of a little awkward. Also, the water tank in the Lelite is very nice, but it is very close. Like if you have it underneath some cabinets, it is a little bit difficult to get a pitcher back there to, to actually pour in. And because both these machines are relatively heavy, you don't want to really move them around once they're kind of in place. And then one of the uh, kind of odd things too is the drip tray. My wife, pointed this one out because I'm a person who's very, <laughs> I don't know, I just don't pay attention to things like this, but she definitely does, where you have uh, sometimes because of the grates, they're very close together. They'll actually hold some coffee or liquid. So when you put a coffee cup on there and then take it off, you actually on the bottom have some liquid on the bottom of your cup, which can stain and can, you know, cause issues like that. Whereas on the Lelite, they're pretty, you know, wide grates. You don't really ever get water stuck on it. Sometimes you'll give it a little coffee that'll dry on it, but it doesn't really ever get stuck on the grate itself. The one thing I'll say too on the Silvano that I really do like, the build quality is actually, I think, maybe even slightly nicer in some ways than the Lelite. Like the metal is a little bit thicker and stuff like that. Not by some like crazy margin that would like change my mind or anything like that, but you know, the build quality of the Silvano is really nice and it's set at nine bars out of the box. I can't stress how much I like the fact that this is set at the correct pressure out of the box. Um, the Lelite on the other hand is set at like 12 bars out of the box, which is kind of high. Now you can kind of get to nine bars using the flow control paddle, but um, it does change your water debit, which is a whole nother story that I don't want to get into. It's a very complicated um, discussion. But um, just know that you do have to kind of, if you want your, your more traditional shots, like at 10 to 9 bars, 
you do have to adjust it. And adjusting it is a little difficult. You gotta get a screwdriver kind of in an awkward area to, to change that out. It's time to make a shot of espresso. We're gonna do a side by side. I have 15 grams measured out in these two cups. And we're gonna to try to um, shoot out hopefully around the same for each one. We're gonna use the DF64 with the SSP burrs. So let's do it. All right, so we just pulled two shots in about 30 seconds. We got 34 grams in this one, 35 grams, and then we did like 33 grams on this one. Um, so they're really, really similar shots. Um, so let's go ahead and taste the Lelite first. There's a big creme bomb on this one, so there's a lot of creme on both. They have settled a little bit, um, so it should be pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, smooth. Uh, has nice chocolatey flavors, nice hazelnut. This is, uh, by the way, this is the Jaguar Espresso. Uh, I just reviewed it like two days ago. So you can click on that link above if you wanna see the actual full review of the coffee. But um, this is very, very good. Nice body. Let's see if we can taste any differences. We did have a nice pre-infusion on this one, so on the other one. So let's see if we see anything. They both smell fantastic. Pretty good. It has maybe a slight more astringency to it. It's a little bit more bitter, but nothing crazy. Uh, this coffee is really, really fresh. So that might have something to do with it, uh, especially when you're not doing a pre-infusion, a longer pre-infusion to let it bloom a little bit more. Um, so that, that might be possibly there. It is really still pretty very tasty, has a nice um, nice coffee, caramel, or um, rather co uh, dark chocolate flavors. It's, it's really nice. Uh, I will say like the Lalite, you were able to pick out the flavors a little bit more, uh, the hazelnut and the chocolate. This, it's very good. You still get those flavors, but they're not quite as separated. You, I wouldn't be upset handed either of those shots of espresso there. They're both fantastic shots. All right, so at the beginning we talked about the price difference and is it worth it. Um, I, that's really up to you know the consumer, you, whoever's purchasing. I can't tell you that you're getting that much more value in an Elite Bianca that's $2,000 more money, roughly. Um, but it does give you kind of a more pleasant, more fun experience, especially if you're already into making espresso with the flow control and all that stuff. And uh, the E61, I, I think in general, when you have an E61, it's just a slightly better experience too. You, you end up getting a little bit drier shots, uh, dr drier pucks afterward, knocking them out after is a little bit nicer. Um, and you have the, the full support of like, you know, E61s are used across the board in so many other machines. So there, there are benefits there. But, you know, in terms of usability, day-to-day -day stuff, you know, are you getting $2,000 worth of value? I don't know. I don't know if I could tell you that you are. So maybe getting into a machine like this, especially if you aren't super deep into it already, is a good idea. I think the one, the, the, the couple of reasons to go here is, one, you're getting an E61. You're getting all the things out of the box, which is nice. The, the, the Silvano, you don't get the bottomless porta filters. You don't get the two and four hole steam tips. You don't get quite all the uh, extras that you do with the Lelite. And um, obviously the flow control is like, you know, if you really like playing with espresso and, and you know, not wasting as many shots because you can kind of get some type of taste, you know, some, something you could drink with this in almost any case once you've learned how to use it. So that's, that's that, you know, that's the decision for, for anybody to make. 
You can get this for $1,095 on the Espresso Outlet. I want to double, triple thank them for sending that uh, machine to us to review. And uh, you can get this one for around $2,995 on the Espresso Outlet as well. So I'll leave those uh, links below. If you have any of their questions, let me know. But as you know, as far as it goes, these are the two machines. I like them both. Uh, we gave, we did score these separately. And again, you can check out those full reviews above. Catch you in the next video. Thanks.